Hello everyone. It's overcast still here in Southern California with weather in the 70s. With our cooler weather we get an overcast, we get perfect lighting so our plants should look really nice today. The other thing that uh, the weather, cooler weather does is it makes it difficult for airplanes to take off. So they're going to be sounding a little bit more loud than usual. Today we'll be looking at our tomatoes because they're starting to blossom now and we'll look at how they're doing. Uh, we're going to follow up on our conversation um, with regard to transplanting tomatoes real quick and talk about how when you transplant tomatoes it's best to plant them as deep as possible. We called off one of our tomato plants and in doing so we have a, an illustration for you guys of that root growth. So starting from the bottom where our tomato is there's the initial roots and when we planted it deeper with um, soil covering uh, the bottom portion of the tomato stock the root starts to come out of it so that's a good illustration uh, for you guys about uh, why it's good to plant tomatoes deep. The other thing that we are going to talk about a little bit today is whether plants can feel and I'm sitting next to this citrus tree because it seems like the plant can feel us walking back and forth and maybe we brush up against it and it doesn't like it too much so then it starts growing that way. Uh, th there's a good distribution of sun so it should grow nice and bushy and um, grow this way as well but it seems like maybe it feels us walking back and forth and wants to grow that way. So we're gonna look at some tomatoes here, the pole tomatoes, and it seems like they can feel and they've changed the way they've grown because because there wasn't a trellis uh, behind them to provide them support. So it seems like uh, they felt that there wasn't support and they stopped growing. And um, well, we'll see that in a second. So along the trellis are our heirloom pole tomatoes or indeterminate tomatoes. And this trellis was only recently installed. Many of these tomato plants have been growing here without a trellis to support them and I think they can feel that and they've since adapted the way they grow. Here is an example of what is a quote-unquote normal growing indeterminate tomato. It makes this very nice and even um, main stem here and it'll grow and it'll just basically act as a fractal and make, make um, a stem, make some buds, make a sucker, make some stem, make some bud, and make some sucker, and it'll keep going and going until I guess it just loses uh, any kind of energy to keep going. Without the trellis, for the most part, some of the tomatoes have adapted and have grown very, very strong stems to keep themselves up, and then they sort of terminated that that fractal growth where they grow um, and make new growth, make some buds, make new growth, make some buds, and they terminate it. So, so instead they make this like, they terminate here and they make this sucker growth which is really thick and sturdy and then kind of started to grow that fractal growing once again. So it makes me wonder about t plants and how they can feel and they adapt themselves. Um, so we have that happening with a lot of the tomato plants that are here. But nonetheless, we're gonna get tomatoes. So something to keep in mind for tomato growers is whether you want to, from the get-go, provide them with support or, or not. So. This is a, I can't, I lost the tag here. I think this is either a beefsteak or a mortgage lifter tomato. It's making buds. And this one over here is a black crim. And they're making buds. So we're, we're very excited about these large buds. It's gonna mean large tomatoes. Over here is a black prince and it's got a lot of flowers. And then next to it is Aunt Ruby's German green tomato and they're starting to bud. 
And then next to it is a brandy wine. And we're seeing a lot of large flowers. Uh, speaking of flowers, the best insect to pollinate it is the bumblebee. It's got the right frequency for the pollen to release and shake off. But sometimes people tap the, the plant. Um, we also have wind that we're seeing and the wind probably will pollinate the tomato. But um, yeah, this is kind of like a rain dance for you if you like. You tap the plant to get it to pollinate. But in, in my experience, they pretty much pollinate themselves without too much work. Here is a Cherokee purple and it's got some large blossoms that are forming. And this plant was growing all weird. It's basically adapted and grew um, in such a way that it's self-supporting. And this looks like it might be a sucker here. So we'll just pinch this off. We don't want it to grow into a new plant. So yeah, those are some of our heirloom pole tomatoes and how they're doing. In this second bed here, we had some more uh, tomatoes, but we had to cull them off because they, they weren't doing too well and um, they're not gonna form good fruit for us. And if anything, they're gonna be prone to disease. So we culled them off. This is a black prince and we have a tomato forming. We're gonna go over there and look at our bush tomatoes. Those are heirloom Italian Roma tomatoes. And once again, we grew this by um, digging out a trench. And as the plant backfilled, we, uh, or as the plant grew, we backfilled it. Um, kind of, we're growing them kind of like potatoes and seeing if we can grow bush tomatoes without providing any kind of cage or support for them. And so far, they seem to be doing all right, so without any support. Maybe when there's fruit on them, they'll lean over and, and we may need to do something, but we'll see, we'll see how they're growing. If anything, I may go and add more soil to hill them up and provide them with support. But they're starting to make blossoms. And once again, these are bush tomatoes, so we welcome these sucker growths. The, the, the growth that comes out of the uh, armpit of the plant, they'll form into um, a bigger portion of the tomato plant and make lots of fruit for us. So we're okay with suckers on bush tomatoes. And we'll go over that way and look at some more of the same plants. And these are the same Italian Romas that we grew and sowed the seeds at the same time. This is a newer bed, so um, we gave this, this area some um, fertilizer just to help it along. Some, um, I think it's a 12, 12 something fertilizer. All right, that's gonna be it for today. In our next video, we'll probably be looking at how our corn are doing. So I hope you um, come back for that. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and happy gardening.